Bacterial vaginosis, previously known as nonspecific vaginitis, is a synergistic polymicrobial infection caused by several bacterial species. Bartonella vaginalis is the most frequently found organism. Other associated organisms include Privotella and Anaros, including Mobiluncus, Bacteroides, Peptostreptococcus, and Fusobacterium. Mycoplasma hominis, Ureaplasma, Streptococcus viridens, and Atopobium vaginae. Bacterial vaginosis affects approximately one third of women, making it the most common gynecological infection encountered in practice. However, it is not considered a sexually transmitted infection. Risk factors for bacterial vaginosis include cigarette smoking, vaginal douching, tub bathing, especially bubble bath, use of over-the-counter intravaginal hygiene products, multiple sexual partners, high frequency of intercourse, use of intrauterine contraceptive devices, presence of a sexually transmitted infection, obesity, previous pregnancy, and history of induced abortion. These factors cause alterations in the normal vaginal flora. Characteristically, the number of lactobacilli is reduced, particularly the hydrogen peroxide producing ones. As a result, vaginal pH is increased. Bartonella vaginalis forms a biofilm in the vagina, which helps the organism to survive in the acidic vaginal environment, high hydrogen peroxide concentrations, and evade antibiotic treatment. The most common symptom of bacterial vaginosis is classic malodorous vaginal discharge. The odor is characteristically described as fishy due to the presence of volatile amines. Discharge will be gray, thin, and homogeneous and adherent to the vaginal mucosa. With time, patients will experience pain during urination and sexual intercourse. Bulvar irritation is less common in bacterial vaginosis and it is important to know that little or no inflammation is observed in the introitus as bacterial vaginosis is considered a non-inflammatory infective process. If inflammation is present, a concomitant sexually transmitted infection should be suspected. Additionally, there may be a history of recent antibiotic use, wearing an intrauterine contraceptive device, and vaginal douching. It is also important to inquire about sexual history especially the number of partners, and history of sexually transmitted infections. If left untreated, bacterial vaginosis can lead to several complications. Some of them include the following. Increased risk of salpingitis and endometritis. Post-operative infections. Adverse outcomes in pregnancy, including premature rupture of membranes, preterm labor, chorioamunitis, and postpartum endometritis. Mixed infections with other organisms. Bartonella vaginalis bacteremia. Urinary tract infections. And pelvic inflammatory disease. Diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis is based on the clinical history, vaginal examination, and microscopic examination of the discharge. Since we have already discussed the clinical history and vaginal examination findings, let's talk about microscopic examination of the discharge. For an accurate diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis, demonstrating three of the following four Ansel's criteria is necessary. Demonstration of clue cells on a saline smear, which is the most specific criterion for bacterial vaginosis. A pH greater than 4.5. Characteristic appearance of the discharge as mentioned earlier. And a positive WIF test. WIF test is performed by placing a drop of 10% potassium hydroxide on the speculum after vaginal examination. This causes release of volatile amines from the vaginal fluid. Antibiotics are the mainstay of therapy for bacterial vaginosis. Mitronidazole and clindamycin are widely used. They can be administered orally or as a vaginal gel. The route of administration depends on the severity of infection, patient preference, etc. Asymptomatic women with Gardnerella vaginalis colonization do not require treatment. It is important to advise the patient on minimizing the risk factors for bacterial vaginosis. They should also be advised to avoid using soap or to only use bar soaps when cleaning. Liquid soaps and body washes should be avoided completely.